You're listening to Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. Once again, here's your host, Jack Crisula. Welcome back. We're with Caroline Ashley, the founder of Caroline Ashley Associates, a firm that provides appraisal and auction services. Caroline, tell us about art. What specifically would you like to know about art? That's a pretty big topic. Are, were you interested, Jack, in asking me about what attracts me? What sorts of things do I buy? If a blind person asked you, Caroline, what is art? What would you tell them? Hmm. I think that art is not necessarily what you look at. In other words, it's not necessarily that impressionist painting in a museum. It's what you see. It's your interpretation that makes it art. And that's very individual. That's very unique for each and every person. And that's the beauty of it. As I think about it, I think a blind person would tell you, here's what art is to me. Because a person's voice, etc., how they express themselves, exactly. that's Exactly, yes. That's um, your parents, Caroline, taught you about art. You, in turn, have so- taught your son, Drew, about art. Is this love for art in your genes, or do we all have the love for art in us? I think we all have that love of art in us, and there's different types of art. You know, there's visual art, there's performing art, there's many different kinds of art, as anyone might define it. And I think that that desire for inspiration and creativity is something that we all possess. All kids love to draw with crayons. You see them go to a restaurant and they give them the little sheet with the crayons and away they go. Why is that? Well, I think that there's a creative urge, as I expressed. I mean, if you think about it, if you go back to Paleolithic times, cave people were drawing on walls They were drawing things that were meaningful to them. They were drawing animals from the hunt. They were doing it in the caves of Altamira, Spain. They were doing it in Australia in the caves. And coincidentally, even though they were separated by all these oceans and continents, they were creating the same images. So I think that it's part of our our human DNA, so to speak. I I tend to think that that creative impulse is something that's just inherent in we as humans in human as we as we are as human beings. A lot of parents, a lot of aunts and uncles, a lot of teachers have taken children to the art museums, etc. What does that experience do for a child? Well, it certainly expands their experiential background and I think once again, as I was saying my parents did for me, it helps educate their eye. It helps them gain experience and confidence in looking at things and trusting their own intuition and interpretation of what they're looking at. I think that's a very important component. We've just experienced another spring in Michigan. And every spring in this state, God's angels work 25 hours a day painting with unbelievable colors and paintbrushes. Um, arguably, well, not arguably, the greatest artist of all time is God. Talk to us about God the artist. Well, I think he is the, we know he is the master, and if God were to create a master work, I think it's called his creation. And I think he figured that out a long time ago. I think that if there is a masterwork of God, it is his creation. I think it's simply that. What kind of art does God have on display in heaven? <laughs> well, whatever he has on display, I think, is beyond our human interpretation. I think it transcends our human interpretation. As I say, I think that it embodies all of creation. It's totally expansive. You go to the Louvre in Paris. And if they took all of the art off the walls, just 
the ceilings, the walls, the floors, the marble. It's unbelievable. But you walk into this one room, and one of the smallest paintings in the whole place is this Mona Lisa. It might be two foot by three foot or so. And everybody's drawn to the Mona Lisa. And what, whatever angle you look from, she's looking at you, whether you're left, right. How does that happen? Well, I certainly think a lot has to do with technique. You know, I think that the artist can use certain techniques that create that illusion. I also think that part of it is the fact that if you look at the Mona Lisa, she's looking directly at the viewer. Her, it isn't a side angle. Her view is directly at the viewer, so that when you move, it appears as though her glance is moving with you, and it kind of creates that emotional connection with a work of art that transcends the oil, the canvas that it's on. And that's that's what we call masters, people who can create that kind of thing in a two-dimensional form. Can your eye, if there were 50 young artists, can you pick out which one or two will eventually be known as masters? Well, I think a lot of people try to do that. Uh, but again, it's very interpretive. It's very individual. Um, if you were to ask that question to people who were looking for expert technique, you might get one answer. If you were asking that question to people who were looking at emerging artists, emerging talent, you might get another answer. It all depends on the criteria one is using, I think, to determine who future artists are going to become. Speaking of masters, Michelangelo was one of the masters. And you go to St. Peter's and you see the Pieta. Mm -hmm. And he once said, all I've done is free the Pieta from the stone. What was he telling us? What I think he's describing is using his creative energy to be able to translate something into an inanimate object to a thing that's much more animate in the sense that it is going to embody to us a shape, a form that can convey an emotion that we can interpret, we can look at. And his ability to take that hard rock and turn it into something that we can identify as human form and to relate to it is true artistry. If somebody brings a collectible to you, how do you determine its authenticity? This is a difficult topic in many ways because, first of all, appraisers are not authenticators. That's a misconception. But there are authenticators in the world, and those people usually are part of the artist's family, people who've worked closely with that individual, who have seen his works of art, and who know what he's worked on and what he hasn't. Those are the people who determine authenticity. There's an interesting quote by an individual by the name of Thomas Hoving, who was a past curator of the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and he said that 80% of all things that he saw pass through the museum were fake. So that tells you how many things are of questionable vintage or authenticity. We're talking to Caroline Ashley, and I'm Jack Crisula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR.